All right, guys, today we're going to talk about the very real solar storms and the artificial northern lights. Let's get right into it. What's up, Sky Watchers? What is up indeed? Wednesday, November 12th, 2025. The artificial auroras and solar firestorms, the dual drivers of the November skies. All right, let's get into the real story behind the Northern Lights. Over the past 10 days, our planet has been bombarded by a series of powerful M and X-class solar flares from active sunspot region AR4274, culminating in an X5.16 solar flare, the strongest flare of 2025. These eruptions hurled multiple coronal mass ejections toward Earth, triggering a G4-level geomagnetic storm and spectacular auroras seen as far south as Texas and Arizona. But while the mainstream narrative stops there, something else was happening above Alaska and Northern Europe, something planned. ARP and ISCAT, the technogenic component. Official records now confirm that HARP was conducting ionospheric experiments in November of 2025, including scheduled artificial aurora creation tests around November 10th, precisely when the global aurora intensified. Simultaneously, ISCAT in Norway was running its own ionospheric heating campaign. When the two high-power transmitters inject radio frequency energy into an already magnetically charged ionosphere, the upper atmospheric plasma density changes dramatically. In practical terms, the sun lights the match, but these facilities can reshape the flame. That doesn't mean the solar storm was fake. It means the auroral response was amplified and sculpted by directed energy inputs. The appearance of Steve, strong thermal emission velocity enhancement over Alaska, a narrow purple magenta ribbon associated with energetic sub-auroral flows, fits the pattern exactly. Its temperature, alignment, and the timing all point to technogenic enhancement. Now let's talk about the stratospheric aerosols we all see in our skies. While the upper atmospheric heaters manipulate charged particles, stratospheric aerosol layers play their own role lower down. Metallic and dielectric particulates sprayed through the ongoing stratospheric aerosol programs, they increase the atmospheric conductivity. Under geomagnetic or radio frequency stimulation, those layers scatter light into radio waves differently sometimes producing exaggerated color bands and horizon glows, photographed worldwide this week. In essence, the aerosols act as a mirror film on the edge of the ionospheric canvas. The Chain Reaction Solar flares release real plasma and magnetic fields. HARP and ISCAT inject extra electromagnetic energy into the same region of the ionosphere. Stratospheric aerosols heighten optical and electrical coupling between the layers, and the result is a synthetically boosted overall display, brighter, broader, and more geometrically aligned than natural events. The interplay of natural and engineered energy makes the sky events both breathtaking and deeply revealing of what modern technology can do with Earth's magnetic environment. So when people ask whether the November auroras were real, the answer is complex. The solar storm was authentic, a product of the sun's escalating cycle 25 activity. But the canvas was pre-charged by human instruments and atmospheric modifications. What we witnessed was not purely celestial. It was a demonstration of how the boundaries between natural and artificial have blurred. All right, guys, a huge shout out to Indigo Indignation, Denise B., Someone, Annette Dickman, Lori, Thankful, Daniel Kaza, Melanie Baumfalk, Noreen G., and Michael Jeffrey. You guys keep the show alive, truly. This isn't a side project for me. It's my full-time calling. It takes every hour of my day researching, filming, editing, reporting, and I wouldn't trade it for anything and your support keeps the videos coming. Much love and many thanks. 
Okay, Skywatchers, stay aware, be prepared, and until next time, keep looking up.